Let's find six weird ways to use a tube screamer. Will any of these ideas be genius or will they all be terrible? You have to stick around to find out. If you're a guitarist and you're not aware of the Tube Screamer, I'm guessing you've been in a coma for a couple decades and you just came out of it today. Welcome back. In the ever evolving world of music gear, one iconic device has stood the test of time, captivating musicians with its distinct sound, the Tube Screamer Overdrive Pedal. With a rich history dating back to the late 1970s, this unassuming green stomp box has carved its place in the hearts of guitarists across genres, becoming a central tool for achieving that elusive sweet spot of overdrive. So they're not all green. Here are a few that are definitely not green. Yes, that's very true. In fact, these two right here are not very sought after at all. We sought after them. Yeah, I mean, I think they're pretty cool. I love this one. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's a pedal only a mother would love. Yes. So today we're not going to dive into the history of the Tube Screamer or the subtle differences between each revision or the hundreds of clones that have been made over the years. Today we're going to attempt to use the Tube Screamer in a few ways that are a bit less conventional. And here's what we have to work with. We have four Tube Screamers to choose from, and even though they were all made in different eras for different markets and different customers, they're all extremely similar. First, we have the one that most people recognize, the Ibanez TS9, and you'll notice that it's in pretty good condition, and that's because it's pretty new. It's a reissue of the iconic TS9 from the early 80s. This is the classic one. When you reference it, sure. and you don't want to call it a Tube Screamer, you draw that. Right here is the TS7, part of the Ibanez Tone Lock series from the early 2000s, featuring these very clever lockable potentiometers. This is one of the few tube screamers that isn't green, and it also has a switch to allow for a little extra distortion. It's one of the least sought after tube screamers, maybe because it was made in China, maybe because of the design. It was a huge departure from every other tube screamer that came before it, even though it's likely the second least loved tube screamer, it still sounds great. And the switch actually makes it pretty cool. Yeah, I dig it. Okay, so let's move on to the Ibanez TS5 from the 1990s, part of their Sound Tank series. And this is probably, not probably, this is definitely the least loved tube screamer ever created. And I'm surprised that this tube screamer didn't tank tube screamer sales permanently. I know, I'm sorry, it's terrible. Uh, but anyway, it has this somewhat cheap plastic housing and it kind of looks more like a beetle than it does an effects pedal. Even so, it sounds just like a tube screamer. So it's just in a terrible looking package. I mean, I guess it's kind of unique, right? It's the only one that's plastic. What's interesting about that is it's really the only thing that differentiates it. It's not gimmicky. No. It, just the chassis is plastic. And eventually, I predict in 30, 40 years, because it's the only one that's in a plastic chassis, it's gonna be like, oh, that's the one that's the everybody one. wants. Yes, like, exactly. They'll be throwing these things away left and right. Yeah. You mark our words, in the, in the future, this one's gonna be the one, the one you want. And here we have the Maxon ST-01, a lesser known Japan only model from the 80s. Features a little mid boost knob here, gives it a little bit more control before the overdrive. That's it, that's all of them. Okay, Charles, tell me a little bit about what makes the Tube Screamer so special. There are three general topologies that an overdrive pedal, a, a distortion pedal will have. Mm -hmm. You've got Tube Screamers, you've got Rats, Fuzz, and you've got kind of a clon, which is sort of in the middle. Yeah. So largely a lot of overdrive pedals will fall into those types of sure. circuits. The big difference, say, between a Tube Screamer and a Fuzz is this is a soft clipper, mm -hmm. and this is a hard clipper. Yep. And without getting into too much detail, the signal is going through an op amp, and then there's two diodes that are in the feedback of that op amp. There's a bunch of stuff around it that, that's mm -hmm. helping the signal, but that's largely what's impacting that sound. In a rat, that signal is going straight through some diodes. So it's just hard clipping. Exactly, that, yep. that's hard clipping, soft clipping, and a clon is this magical thing where you have kind of these parallel paths where the sure. clean is getting blended in with the hard clipper stage. And so they are sonically very, very different. Yeah. For sure. Uh, but there's, you know, that is the, the parents of a lot of most pedals that, mm -hmm. that are out there. So there are thousands of videos of people using tube screamers in standard ways. Yeah, we didn't want to do that. We wanted to challenge ourselves and see if there's any novel ways that we could force ourselves to use this. All right, let's get unconventional. 
So I'm going to run my Wurlitzer 200A through a Tube Screamer TS7. I've actually never done this before, so I don't really know how it's gonna sound. I do have a couple other pedals going, some reverbs and some warbly things because I like that sort of stuff. So let's hear how it sounds without the Tube Screamer first. All right, now let's add a little bit of dirt. Okay, so now I have a guitar, and obviously most people are running tube screamers with the guitars, but I'm actually going to try to place it in a position that it's not normally placed in at the very end of my signal chain, right after the delays and reverbs. I'm hoping it adds sort of a lo-fi, saturated, dirty sound to my reverberated guitar. And since this is a stereo setup, I actually have two tube screamers at the end of the signal chain, a TS7 and a TS9. So here it is without the tube screamers. In this example, I've connected my microphone directly to the Tube Screamer, and it's going right into my audio device. I'm going to play a couple of different instruments, my voice, a flute, and a clarinet, and I'll see if I can get some cool sound design-y sounds from it. Let me see if I can make that sound kind of cool by putting it into one of the samplers in Ableton. So here's a bit of a weird one. I've got my old RCA camcorder and I wanna route the composite video signal into my tube screamer. I have no idea what it's gonna do. I'll admit I'm not an expert when it comes to composite video signals, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. So let's just try it and hopefully I don't break anything. So right here is my RCA new Vicon video camera. And this camera is from the late 70s. I believe it's actually a tube camera. Yes, there is a tube inside there. And right now I have this camera pointed over there at my old Commodore and my old Apple IIc. And right there you can see that's what the camera is seeing. And from there the video signal is routed into my old Panasonic portable VHS player. Signal's coming right in here. And then I have the signal going composite video out into my Tube Screamer TS7. And then from there it's going out into this old sharp CRT television. So first I'm gonna route the video signal directly into the TV to see what that looks like, make sure it all works properly. Let's see. Okay, there we go, that's what I expect to see. All right, now let's get the tube screamer involved, see what happens. Let's plug this into the television. Ooh, that looks super cool. Now you notice the pedal isn't even on yet, I'm just routing the signal through the pedal, and it appears to be splitting the RGB signals in some way. I thought maybe it would eliminate the color, but it's really kind of splitting everything in a really cool, garbly way. I, I really love how that looks. All right, that is super rad. Now let's turn on the pedal, and see what happens. Oh, um, kind of makes it less cool. <laughs> the one time a tube screamer makes something less cool. Well, okay, that's interesting. If you turn all the knobs all the way down, you pretty much get no signal. 
if you turn all the knobs all the way up, you do still get a little bit of a signal there, but certainly not nearly as cool as if the pedal is just off. All right, so I actually just wanna route it through a modern television to see if it looks any different. So I've got this composite to HDMI video converter. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't look nearly as cool as it did on the CRT, but signal's coming through. Let's route it through the Tube Screamer. Ah, interesting. It doesn't kind of like switch the colors around like it did on the CRT. It still looks really neat, but it's definitely not what I was expecting. All right, let's see what happens when I actually turn this thing on. Signal kind of stays there a little bit. All knobs at max, what happens when we turn the drive? Not much, doesn't really seem to be doing anything. Let's turn the level down a little bit. Oh, you do get a few cool glitches there. It's like shifting the picture from side to side. Oh, and we lost some color there too. That looks so cool. That's pretty neat. So yeah, I think in some situations you could use the Tube Screamer as a way to glitch up composite video. So there it is, Tube Screamer. If you already have one, buy another one. If you have three, buy a fourth one. <laughs> and you should probably buy this one right here because this one's gonna be worth a ton of money someday. We're telling you, this one right here, this plastic beast. Also, think about some weird ways that you can use the Tube Screamer. Do you have any ideas? Let us know in the comments because uh, this was a lot of fun and I think you'll probably have fun making some weird sounds with it as well. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're well. See you later.